Malalaman ninyo ang katotohanan, ang katotohanan ang magpapalaya sa inyo. I am not the healer. Jesus Christ living in me is the healer. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Kung hindi siya magdududa sa kanyang puso, sa halip, bagkos, mananampalataya siya ng sinasabi ng kanyang bibig ay mangyayari. In living in the last days, you have to ensure your eternity. Prepare for eternity. Purihin po ang Panginoon sa pangalan po ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, ang siyang tunay na may-ari ng Jesus Lord Church Worldwide Ministry. Pinapaabot ko pong tos po sa pakikiramay sa lahat ng, lahat ng mga naging biktima ng nakaraang malakas na bagyo na bumisita rito sa ating bansa, ang Typhoon Ulysses. At ka, alam nating lahat, bago dumating ang Typhoon Ulysses, ay meron pang dalawang Typhoon na, na nakaraan. Sunod-sunod po ang Typhoon. Ang Typhoons na bumisita sa ating bansa. At kahapon po nabalitaan ko mula sa mga nakakita sa satellite, nakita nila satellite, may mga Typhoons na namang nakap nakapila. Iisa ang direksyon patungo sa Pilipinas. Ano po ang mensahe ng Diyos? Bakit taon-taon pinakamahinang bumibisita sa Pilipinas ang dalawampung bagyo? At ito'y nagbibigay ng kalamidad, disasters, baha, multi-billion destructions of multi-billion infrastructures and even thousands of killings. Marami nang sasabi kasi kaya ng Pilipino na tiisin niyan eh. Kaya pinapadala ng Diyos yan. Napakababaw ng mga paniniwala ng tao. Kaya sa oras pong ito, tandaan natin, hindi perfect will ng Diyos ng bansang Pilipinas ay dumanas ng sangkatutak na disasters and calamities. Hindi kalooban ng Panginoon ng Pilipinas ay dumanas ng uh, naglalakihang baha, destruction at kamatayan ng mga tao. Ito po'y bahagi ng uh, tinatawag na judgment Bunga ng sumpa, bunga ng kasalanan. Kaya sa oras pong ito, ay nilagay ng Diyos sa puso ko ang isang simple pero napakahalagang mensahe. Ang pamagat po ng mensahe nilagay ng Panginoon sa akin puso, Why? Why curses prevail among nations of the world? Bakit ang mga sumpa ay nakapagahari sa iba't ibang bansa sa buong mundo. Why? Meron pong mga ilang scriptures na gusto kong basahin natin. Tingnan po natin ang Deuteronomy chapter 30. Mababasa po natin dito sa Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. NIV version. See, I set before you today life and prosperity. Death and destruction. So verse 16, For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Basahin na rin natin ang 17. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down and other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will certainly be destroyed. You will not live Long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. Verse 19. 
This day I call heaven and earth as a witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to His voice, hold fast to Him, for the Lord is your life and He will give you many years in the land He swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ang Diyos ang magpala ng pagkakabasa ng kanyang buhay at banal na salita. Dito po ikitang kita natin na ang Diyos ay hindi diktador. The Lord gives every human being the basic human freedom. Freedom to choose. Do you want life? Do you want prosperity? Or do you want death or destruction? At doon sa 19, I said before you, life and death, buhay at kamatayan, and blessings and curses. Mamili kayo. Makikita natin, God is so good. God is so fair. Tayong mga nilalang ng Diyos. Pinamimili tayo ng Diyos. Gusto ba natin ng life, prosperity, matiwasay na buhay, masaganang buhay? O gusto natin ng death and destruction? Pinamimili tayo ng Diyos. Nasa ating kamay ang desisyon. Ang perfect will ng Diyos, kayo at ako, ang lahat ng nilalang niya, una ay maging anak niya. Di ba, Brother Eddie, lahat ng tao ay anak ng Diyos. Nung una po, akala ko lahat ng tao anak ng Diyos. Nung mabasa ko yung John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only one and only begotten Son, whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Gayo na lamang ang pagsinta, ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa mga salanang sanlibutan nagawa niyang ihandog, ibigay ang kanyang kaisa-isang bugtong nana upang ang sino man na sa kanya'y sumampalataya, manalig at magtiwala ay huwag nang mapahamak kundi magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Ilan po ang anak ng Diyos? Ilan ang bugtong na anak ng Diyos? Iisa lang ang bugtong na anak ng Diyos. Si Jesus. Nang ang tao at ang Diyos ay magkasama sa paraiso, pinaghiwalay ng kasalanan, nasumpa ang tao, nahiwalay sa banal na Diyos. Yung impyernong ginawa ng Diyos para kay Lucifer at sa mga demonyo, sa fallen angels, ay dinadala ni Satanas ang mga tao doon sa impyerno para bilang pagiganti sa banal na Diyos na nagpalaya sa kanila sa kalangitan sapagat nahihikayat niya ang mga tao na ipasok niya ang kasalanan kay Adan at kay Eva. Kaya lahat ng iyanak ni Adan at ni Eva from the first generation to up to the present time, up to the future time, nagmamana ng traits ng DNA ni Adan, ni Adam, ni Adam and Eve. Yung original sin, yung sinful nature, yung congenital sinfulness, minamana ng lahat ng tao. Kaya ang sabi ng Biblia sa Romans 3.23, lahat ay nagkasala, walang nakaabot sa pamantayan ng Diyos. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. At sinabi ng Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Gayun na lang, ang, pag, ang, ang, ang kabayaran naman kasalanan ay kamatayan. Subalit ang regalo ng Diyos ay buhay na walang hanggan. Kaya mayroong John 3.16, gayon na lamang ang pagsinta ng Diyos sa sanlibutan makasalanan. Nirigalo ay binigay niya ang kanyang kaisa-isang bugtong na anak. Upang ang sino man sa kanya ay sumampalatay, huwag mapahama kundi magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. 
Kalooban ng Panginoon na lahat ng sumampalataya sa kanyang, mga, sa kanyang anak, bugtong na anak ay magkaroon ng karapatang maging anak niya. Kaya tayo inaampun ng Diyos, iisa ang kanyang anak. Pag sumampalataya tayo kay Jesus, we will receive adoption paper, immigration paper. John chapter 1 verse 12. Bibigyan tayo ng right to become children of God. Everybody read John chapter 1 verse 12. For the uh, first timers and beginners of this program, everybody read. Yet to all who did receive him, referring to Jesus, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Right to become children of God. Everybody say, right to become children of God. Ang sumampalataya tumanggap sa bugtong na anak ng Diyos na si Jesus, Nagkatawang tao at namatay sa krus ng kalbari dahil sa kasalanan ng lahi ng tao, na itigis ang kanyang banal na dugo na walang bahid kasalanan, exempted from original sin, dahil siya'y pinanganak ng isang birhing babae, miraculously by the power of the Holy Spirit, exempted ang dugo ni Jesus sa original sin, kaya yung dugo ni Jesus ang kaisa-isang dugo sa langit at sa lupa na may kapangyarihang maglinis at maghugas ng kasalanan ng tao, magremit ng kasalanan ng tao. Ang sino mang sumampalataya kay Jesus sa kanyang ginawang supreme sacrifices on the cross ay bibigyan sila ng karapatang maging anak ng Diyos. At kapag tayo naging anak na ng Diyos, pwede na tayong tumawag sa Diyos ng Ama namin, suma sa langit ka, Sambahin ang alan mo, mapasa amin ang kaharian mo dito sa lupa kung paano ito'y nasa langit. Ang ibig sabihin, bibigyan tayo ng immigration paper, adoption paper. Magiging anak tayo ng Diyos. Palapakan mo na sa nila yung Panginoon. Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. Kalooban ng Panginoon ng kanyang mga anak ay mabuhay ng matiwasay, masagana, malusog, mapayapa. Anong sabi sa 3 John 2, King James Version Bible? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Holistic blessings. Above all, gusto niya magkaroon tayo ng kasaganaan, prosper, be in health, kalusugan, even as thy soul, ang ating kaluluwa ay may kalusugan, may kaligtasan. Holistic blessings, total blessings. I wish above all things. Beloved, I wish above all things. Gusto ng Diyos. Kaya lang hindi siya diktador. Hindi niya pwedeng sabihin, itong mga anak ko na ito, Maging masagana, mapayapa, matagumpay. Hindi pwede. Pagtatawanan siya ni Satanas. Kasi binigyan niya ng free will ang bawat tao. Kaya makikita natin itong teksto natin, Why curses prevail among nations? Samantalang dito sa Deuteronomy 30, verse 15, verse 19, I set before you life and prosperity, or death and destruction. Make a choice. Ang sabi niya sa verse 19, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Mamili kayo. Dapat maintindihan po natin ito. Marami nagtatanong bakit naman ganito sa Pilipinas. Hindi po maalis yung isang bagyo, may nakapila na naman. Hindi naiintindihan ang kaibahan ng blessings and curses, pagpapala at sumpa. Kapag ang isang tao, isang pamilya ay nasa ilalim ng sumpa, anumang pagsisikap ang gawin niya, magtrabaho man siya, araw at gabi, nakalubog pa rin siya sa utang. At kung minsan, pansamantala, nagpapasasa siya sa mga material na bagay, pagkatapos biglang magkakaroon ng mabigat na problema, mababankrap. Totoo ang sumpa. 
totoo rin ang blessing. Kaya sa banal na kasulatan, makikita natin sa Deuteronomy 28. Punta tayo sa Deuteronomy 28. Basahin natin verse 1 to verse 14. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations will set you the Lord will set you high above all the nations of the earth tandaan nyo napakahalagay yung salitang if you fully obey everybody say fully obey hindi lang obey, fully obey. Hindi lang follow, carefully follow all His commands. I give you today, the Lord God will set you high above all nations on the earth. All these blessings will come on you. And accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Sa ibang translation sa King James, blessings will overtake you. Tatabunan ka ng pagpapala. Hindi ka tatabunan ng lahar. Hindi ka tatabunan ng baha. Hindi ka tatabunan ng calamities and disasters. Hindi ka tatabunan ng bagyo. Blessings will accompany you will overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Verse 3, You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Kahit saan ka pumunta sa syudad, sa rural areas in the country, you will be blessed. Verse 4, The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading throw, throw will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Wow! The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven. Verse 8, verse 8. The Lord will send a blessing on your burns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land He is giving you. Verse 9. The Lord will establish you as His holy people as He promised you on earth if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to Him. Verse 10. Then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. Verse 11. Hallelujah. The Lord will grant you what? The Lord will grant you what? Abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, the crops of your ground, in the land He swore, he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations but will borrow from none. Listen carefully, please. Tingnan yung sabi, magpapautang ka. Hindi ikaw ang mangungutang. Kapag pinagpala ka ng Diyos, Hindi ka na magiging maungutang. Ikaw na magpapautang. You will lend to many nations but will borrow from none. Hallelujah. Verse 13, verse 13. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top never at the bottom. Verse 14, Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today, to the right or to the left, 
following other gods and serving them. Ito ang huli, itong huling talata sa tinatawag na blessings for obedience. Yung binasa natin talatang 1 hanggang 14 ng Deuteronomy 28, blessings for obedience. Pag tayo mayroong obedient heart, yung huli, do not turn aside from any of the commands I gave you today, to the right or to the left, following other gods or serving other. Kaya ho, napakagandang revelation sinabi ng Diyos, I set you today life and prosperity. Life and prosperity or death and destruction. Make a choice. Maraming mga tao, they choose death and destruction by violating, disobeying the commands of the Lord, the teachings of the Lord. Ano naman nakalagay sa verse 15? Tingnan niya verse 15. Baligtad dito, baligtad. Dito naman yung tinatawag na curses. Curses through or through or poor disobedience. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all His commands and decrees, I am giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. Yung verse 15 hanggang verse 68, makikita niyo ron ang iba't ibang sumpa na mangyayari sa isang tao, sa isang pamilya, sa isang bansa. Kapag dinisobey natin ang mga utos ng Panginoon. Sampulan nga natin, verse, 15, verse 16, verse 16, You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Baligtad. Doon sa blessings through obedience, you will be blessed in the city and you will bless in the country. Dito naman, pag dinisobey mo ang mga utos ng Panginoon, you will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Verse 17, your basket and your kneading throw will be cursed. Kasama sa kabuhayan yan. Step 18, the fruit of your womb will be cursed, the crops of your land, and the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. Mga piste magdaratingan sa iyong mga alagang hayop. The fruit of your womb will be cursed, the crops of your land, and the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. 19, please. You will be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. Verse 20. The Lord will send on you curses. Padadala ng Diyos sa inyo, mga curses, mga sumpa, confusion, rebuke in everything you put your hand to until you're destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking Him. The Lord will plague you with diseases until He has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. Everybody say, the Lord will plague you. Plague. 21 yan, ano? Verse 22, plague with diseases. The Lord will strike you with wasting diseases, with fever and inflammation. Naalala ko tuloy ang Nobel Coronavirus. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever, inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mild dew, which will plague you until you perish. Ang, ang Nobel Coronavirus Pandemic ay plague, pestilence, nagkokos ng pamin and poverty. Kaya napakahalaga yung sinabi ng Panginoon sa ating text, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. Sa 19, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Make a choice. Choose life. Advice ng Panginoon, choose life. Pero matigas ang ulo ng, ng mga tao. Napakahalaga yung sinasabi sa Bible na obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Alam niyo ang curse. Curse, sabi sa dictionary, is misfortune, evil, doom, harm, unhappiness, curse, sufferings. Ang blessing naman ay special favor, mercy, benefit, 
the blessings of liberty, favor, or gift bestowed by God, thereby bringing happiness, self-explanatory blessings or curses. Pinamimili tayo ng Diyos, blessings or curses. Gusto mo ng blessings? Sumunod ka sa mga utos ng Panginoon. Gusto mo namang sumpa? Suwayin mo ang mga utos ng Panginoon. Tingnan natin sandali ang Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, verse, uh, verse 1. Okay. Everybody read. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Verse 3. Dito nagsisimula ang unang commandment, the first commandment. Verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Unang utos ng Diyos yan sa Ten Commandments. Verse 4, Second Commandment. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or the earth beneath or in the waters below. Sa King James Version kasi, iba Pero ang ganda ibig sabihin, You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Listen carefully, please. Ang binabanggit dito, when, once you are serving, bowing, worshiping, images, graven images, idols, ano ang sabi? The Lord your God, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generations. Dapat malaman ng sangkatauhan, may mga sumpa ang Diyos na minamana ng kanika nilang mga anak at kanika nilang apo hanggang third to fourth generations. Kung mahal ninyo ang inyong mga anak, mahal ninyo ang inyong mga apo, kasama na ang apo sa tuhod, at apo sa talampakan hanggang fourth generations, kung mahal ninyo, hindi nyo susuwayin ang mga utos ng Diyos. God is so holy. Hindi siya nagbibiro. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. Verse 6, verse 6, not but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. Kapag naman kayo naging masunurin sa Panginoon, fully obeying, carefully following the commands and the teachings of God, yung anak ninyo at lahi ninyo, pagpapalain ng Diyos. Ang lesson dito, ang sumpa ay namamana. Ang pagpapala ng Diyos ay namamana. Pag ikaw ay na-please mo ang puso ng Diyos, ang mga anak mo magiging maganda ang buhay. Ang mga apo mo magiging maganda ang buhay. Pag na-please mo ang Panginoon, pero kapag pinagalit mo ang Diyos sa katigasan ng iyong ulo, <laughs> naging stiff-neck ka, stubborn, Sino, binabaliwala mo ang kanyang mga utos. Hindi lang ikaw ang masusumpa, hindi lang ang pamilya mo, hindi lang ang kabuhayan mo, pati yung mga anak mo at anak ng iyong mga anak. Verse 9, Verse 7, verse 7, please. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses His name. Maraming tao, binabaliwala ang pangalan ng Panginoon. Ginagamit pa ang pangalan ng Diyos. Susumpa sa pangalan ng Diyos, pero kasinungalingan ang ginagawa. Napakahirap suwayin ang kautusan ng Panginoon. Eight, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. During sa Old Testament, ang Sabbath day, Sabado. Nung ma ma magkatawan tao si Jesus, mamatay siya, at pagkatapos mamatay, Biyernes Santo, kinalingguhan, nagaroon siya ng resurrection, na buhay sa mga patay. The entire Christian world, ang resurrection ni Jesus, ang ginawang worship day. Bagamat lahat tayo should worship the Lord every day in our life. Pero kung araw ng linggo ay nagkakaisa tayo in worshiping the, spirit, the Lord in the spirit and in truth. Verse 9, Pastor, please. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Then, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant or your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is then in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, fifth commandment, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not murder. Galit na galit ang Diyos sa mga mamamatay tao. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery or fornication. You shall not commit sexual immorality. Galit na galit ang Diyos dyan. Verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. Sa ating bansa, ang pagpapalit ng asawa, pagpapalit ng, ng babae, o kuminsan lalaki, lala, babaero, lalakero, ang pagpapalit, parang pagpapalit ng damit. Sa Amerika, magpapakasal ngayon sa Las Vegas, bukas, hiwalay, divorce, palit ng asawa, binastos ng Diyos. Kaya nagkalat ang kasamaan sa buong mundo. Kaya hindi ka takataka na magkaroon ng worldwide pandemic. Dahil ang banal na puso ng Diyos ay masyado nang nabugbog ng sangkatutak na pagsalansang ng lahi ng tao. Verse 15, You shall not steal. Huwag kang magnanakaw. Thieves. Alam niyo ba yung magnanakaw ko ng maliit o malaki? Naging ugali maraming mga tao. Yung bang meron silang habit na makaisa. Napasok lang sa isang bahay, may nakita maganda, hindi nakita nung may, nung may ari, kukuni na. Kuminsan sa business, in, ang, ang corruption sa business, hindi lang sa gobyerno, private businesses. Grabe ang corruption. Halos wala ka nang mapagkatiwalaan, kahit ka mag-anak mo. Mapagkatiwalaan mo sa limang libo, sampung libo, pero, pero pagdating na sa isang daan libo, isang milyon, naduduling na, natutokso ng magnakaw. Ay eh, makikita mo, sweldo, ganito lang, nakabili ng ilang mga house and lot, nakabili ng kung ano, ano mga negosyo. Because of thievery, because of robbery, stealing, you shall not steal. Kasama yan sa sampung utos ng Diyos. Verse uh, 16, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Do not be a liar. Perjury requires six years imprisonment sa batas ng Pilipinas. Perjury, pagsisinungaling. You shall not give false testimony against your labor, neighbor. Do not be a liar. 17, the Tenth Commandment. Pakinggan nyo, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female sermon, his ox or dunking or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Do not covet. Huwag mong pagnanasahan. Ang pag-aari, ang kabuhayan ng iyong kapwa. Huwag mong pagnanasahan ang asawa ng iyong kapitbahay. Huwag mong pagnanasahan ang possession ng iyong kapitbahay. Kaya ang Diyos ay galit na galit sa gambling. Dahil ang mga gamblers, pinag, pinag, uh, pinag, uh, p, uh, gusto nilang makuha yung kabuhayan ng kanilang kapwa. Get rich quick. Eh, ang kasinos kumakalat ngayon sa buong mundo. Tingnan niyo ang utos ng Panginoon sa Proverbs 6, verse 16 up to verse 19. Tingnan niyo ang mga mahalagang utos ng Panginoon. Mga sample lang po ito. Proverbs 6, verse 16 up to verse 19. Everybody read. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to Him. Haughty eyes, Lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Kita niya mga pinapatay ng mga innocent blood, lalo na yun sa abortion. Millions every day of unborn babies are being killed through abortion. Sa Europe, sa Canada, sa America, sa Western countries, baliwala na ngayon. Lalaki sa babae. Same-sex marriage. 
Babae sa babae, same-sex marriage. Meron sa London, na in despair yung babae sa kanyang mga lovers. Pinakasalan niya yung kanyang aso. Yung kanyang magandang aso, pinakasalan. Nakipag-sex sa kanyang aso. Yan ay mangyayari, kaya yung LGBTQ++++ wala nang katapusan yan. Kung anong piling ng tao, legal yun. With due respect. We are not against LGBT personally. We, hate, we, we, we pity them. God hates sins, but God loves the sinners. At kapag napayagan natin ang same sex sa Pilipinas, ang same civil union sa Pilipinas, lalo tayong uulanin ng sumpa. Madadamay ang na mga milyong-milyong tao. Eh kung mga church ay tutulog-tulog, karamihan, hindi naman sana, duwag, ayaw gumawa ng stand. Kung hindi man tamad, duwag. Walang pakialam, hindi nila alam, hinuhukay nila ang kanilang sariling libingan. Kasi pag ang isang bansa ay tinamaan ng sangkatutak na sumpa, damay lahat. Napakahalaga ang righteousness. Tingnan ninyo ang warning ng Panginoon. 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral or idolaters or, I, or adulterers nor men who have sex with men. Ito yung same-sex marriage. With men who have sex with men. Ano susunod pa? Kasama na rin yung woman with woman. Nor thieves, magnanakaw, corrupt. Nor the greedy, yung mga sakim. Nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Sipin niyo, pag tinulak niyo ang tao na mag-commit ng ganyang kasalanan, tinulak niyo sila sa impyerno. Dapat pigilin natin sila. Kaya ilalabanan natin ang mga anti-God bills. Hindi tayo galit doon sa mga involved na mga tao. Naawa nga tayo sa kanila eh. Pinipigil nga natin sila na lumundag sa dagat-dagat ang apoy ng impyerno. At meron kasalanang sin of omission. If you know the good things to do and you don't do, you sin. James 4 verse 17. Don't hinangon ni Edmund Burke the famous statement for what is for what is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Si babasa natin sa worldwide viewers natin. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and does not do it, it is sin for them. Kung alam mong magandang bagay na dapat na gawin mo, hindi mo ginawa, nagkakasala ka. Pag nagkakasala ka, you are making war against God. Kaya ang gusto ng Panginoon ay uh, marami ang makasama sa rapture. Eh, kapag hindi naging holy and sanctified ang buhay ng tao, may iwan siya sa seven years great tribulation with Antichrist. Kaya maging seryoso tayo sa ating preparation for eternity. Hindi ka mo nakapagsisimba tayo kung araw ng linggo, sigurado tayo. Number one, ang puso natin, palinis natin sa Panginoon. Tignan po natin yung uh, Revelation, yung Revelation 21 verse 8. Everybody read Revelation 21 verse 8. But the cowardly, yeah, the cowardly, alam nyo, natuklasan ko, maraming kristyano pala, duwag pa. Duwag pang ipaglaban ng righteousness. May nakausap kaming mga Christians. Anong istan ninyo sa ganito? Anong istan ninyo sa same-sex marriage? Men with women having sex. Women and women having sex na pinagbabawal ng Diyos. Kaya ginuno ng Diyos ang Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis chapter 18 at saka sa chapter 19, ginuno ng Diyos ang Sodom and Gomorrah because of so much homosexual 
sins and and lesbianism. Inuulit ko, hindi tayo galit dun sa tao. Naawa tayo sa mga tao. Gusto natin silang i-liberate. Gusto natin silang emancipate. Gusto natin silang maligtas. Ayaw nating maitulak sila sa dagat-dagat ang apoy ng impyerno. A soul driven in hell will remain in hell not only for 100 years, not only for 1,000 years, not only for 1 million years or billion years, but throughout eternity. Tingnan ninyo ang Revelation 21 verse 8. Everybody read. But the cowardly, yung mga duwag na ipaglaban ang agenda ng Diyos, ipaglaban ang kalaoban ng Diyos, ayaw tumindig at manindigan, ayaw umalis sa comfort zone, hindi ba kasi mamaan loob nila eh. You can never be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You can never be a servant of the Most High God. If you are a man-pleaser, Sinabi ni St. Paul, if I will seek the approval of man, if I will seek the applause of man, I cannot truly really serve God. Kaya ang DNA ng JIL people ay iba. Hindi tayo pwedeng maging duwag sa pakipaglaban natin sa truth, justice, and righteousness. Or else, wala tayong pagkakaiba sa mga anak ni Satanas. Meron nga tayong damit ng Kristyanismo, pero hindi natin ginagawa ang para sa Diyos. Eh, bakit pa tayo kailang mabuhay? Basahin natin para ma, ma, for the consumption ng millions of viewers all over the world. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, lahat ng sinungaling, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur, This is the second death. They will be thrown into the lake of fire. Tingnan ninyo Revelation 20, verse 14, verse 15. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Dagat-dagat ang apoy ng impyerno yan. Verse 15. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. At ako'y magawakas sa isang talata o dalawang talata. Galatians 3, verse 13, verse 14. Everybody read with understanding. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Verse 14. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Ang revelation po rito ng magkatawang tao si Jesus nung siya ipako sa krus ng Kalbaryo, he was hung on the tree. Siya po ay ginawang sumpa. Wala siyang kasalanan, ginawang kasalanan. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He knew no sin but was made sin for us so that we can be made as righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 21 ng 2 Corinthians 5 God made Him, everybody read, who had no sin to be sin for us so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Tayo pong nakagapos sa kaparusahan at kapangyari ng kasalanan, hindi tayo makawala, isuko natin ang ating buhay kay Jesus sapagat Siya na walang kasalanan ay ginawang kasalanan upang tayo naman ay maging righteousness of God. Tinubos tayo sa kaparusahan at kapangyari ng kasalanan at walang iba kundi si Jesus na naging sumpa sa cross of Calvary. Hindi lamang sa kaparusahan kapangyari ng kasalanan, tinubos pa tayo sa sumpa ng sakit karamdaman. Anong sabi? Sa, verse, sa Isaiah 53 verse 5, Isaiah 53 verse 5, everybody read. Isaiah 53 verse 5, He was pierced for our transgressions, He was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on Him, 
And by His wounds or by His stripes, sa ibang translation, by His wounds or stripes, we are healed. So nagbigay ng atonement for healings si Jesus. Hindi lang for sins. Hindi lang yon Sa poverty, paghihirap ng buhay, kahirapan, tinubos din tayo through the atonement made by Jesus on the cross. 2 Corinthians 8.9 2 Corinthians 8.9 Everybody read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Everybody read. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor so that you through His poverty might become rich. Tinubos tayo sa lahat ng uri ng sumpa. Siya naging sumpa. Pag sinuko natin ang ating buhay kay Jesus, sinurender natin ang ating buhay kay Jesus, huhugasan tayo ng banal at makapangiran dugo ni Jesus na dumari sa Cruz ng Calvario. Kakanselin niya ang lahat ng sumpa. The Holy Blood of Jesus has awesome power in canceling all kinds of curses. Papasok siya sa ating puso at buhay. Yung ating puso na puno ng kasalanang minana kay Adan, dead, spiritually dead, will be made alive, regenerated, born again. Yun ang ibig sabihin ni Jesus sa John 3.3, 3, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Tumayo tayong lahat sandali. Glory to God. Let us all sur- submit our lives Surrender our lives to Jesus. I surrender or in Tagalog, there are 107 million Filipinos. I don't know how many of them can enter heaven if there would be a rapture tonight. But at least we are giving them a chance to be part of the rapture. Napakahirap ang maiwan sa seven years great tribulation kay Antichrist, the Satan incarnate. Raise up your hands. Let's sing in English, Sur I Surrender All, but this time in Tagalog, in Filipino language. Iniaalay ko, iniaalay ko ang lahat sa iyo, Kristo. Sing it prayerfully. Iniaalay ko. Iniaalay ko. Hallelujah. The Lord is just standing beside you. Ang lahat sa iyo, Kristo. Last time in English, in English, I surrender all. Let's bow our head. Let us all be silent, please. In silence, we can easily feel the presence of the Holy God who said that if there are two or three gathering together in His name, He is in their midst. Nasa presensya natin ngayon ang Holy Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Naghihintay ang Panginoon na ihandog natin muli ang ating buhay sa Kanya. Let's commit and recommit, surrender and resurrender, dedicate and rededicate our life to Jesus. Just follow me with a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, Jesus, I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. You became a curse curse. on the cross of Calvary. So that you can redeem us from the curses of the law. Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon, sa lahat ng kasalanan na mana at nagawang kasalanan, including the sins of omissions. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. 
Cleanse me with your holy blood. Shed on the cross of Calvary. I renounce and forsake all kinds of sins in my life. I cancel all kinds of curses in my life. By the holy blood of Jesus, I pull down the strongholds of the devil in my life, in my family, by the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' exalted name, Lord Jesus, I dedicate, rededicate, I commit and recommit my entire life to you. Be my Lord, my Master, my King, my Savior, my Deliverer, my Provider, and be my God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your love and wisdom. Help me, Lord. Mula ngayon, mamahaling kita o Diyos ng buong puso, ng buong kaluluwa, ng buong kaisipan, ng buong lakas. Salamat po. Ako yung pinatawad sa lahat ng kasalanan. Pinalaya mo ako sa kapangyarihan ng kasalanan Ako'y malaya na. Ako'y tunay ng anak ng buhay na Diyos. I am a new creation. I am born again. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Panginoon, buksan mo lahat ng bintana ng langit. Iyunad mo ang iyong mapaghimala, mapagpanang kamay. Abutin mo mula sa langit. Iyunad mo ang iyong mapaghimalang kamay. Abutin mo ng iyong mapagpalang kamay ang lahat ng lalaki at babaeng nasa loob ng jail prayer guarding ito, Panginoon. At ang mga nasa labas in Luzon, besides in Mindanao, and in the four corners of the earth na inaabot ng iyong mga salita, Panginoon. Abutin mo sila. Lay your hands upon them and release unto them the surging resurrection power of Jesus. Yes, Lord, the same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead begin to quicken their spirit, begin to quicken their soul, begin to quicken their mortal body. Hallelujah. Take away all kinds of curses from their lives. I cancel them by the holy blood of Jesus. Take away all kinds of sicknesses and diseases from their bodies, Lord. And I release unto them the divine healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the stripes of Jesus, I declare they were healed. By the wounds of Jesus, they are healed. They are delivered by the power of the blood of Jesus. And Lord God, in Jesus' name, grant the desires of the heart. Fill their hearts with peace that passeth all understanding, with joy unspeakable. And Lord, encapsulate them with your glory. Cover your people tightly with the blood of Jesus that no weapon that sperm against them shall prosper. Begin to heal. Heal the lives of your people. Heal their families. Heal our beloved country and people. Heal the Philippines. Bless, bless, bless the Philippines, Lord. We rebuke the threats of litany of typhoons discovered in satellite planning to target the Philippines again. Lord, in Jesus' name, we rebuke and cancel all these curses by the holy blood of Jesus over the Philippines in Jesus' name. Lord, hasten the transformation of the Philippines to be a blessed nation of the living God. Let the Philippines, Lord God, hallelujah, fulfill the glorious prophetic destiny to be a blessed nation of the living God that will be a model before the eyes of the world and that will make an impact to the destiny of the nations of the world for the glory of God. Panginoon, ihanda mo kaming lahat na magkaroon ng puso, sanctified heart, holy heart, so that kung magkaroon man ng rapture anytime, walang maiwan sa amin sa kamay ni Antichrist. Salamat, salamat, Panginoon. Ano man ang bundok ng problema na nakikita mo sa buhay ng bawat isa, financial problems, family problems, relationship, 
o ano mang klase ng problema ang gawa ng Diablo sa kanilang kanilang mga buhay, I rebuke them, I cancel them by the blood of Jesus. I command the mountains of problems to bow down at the name of Jesus and be cast into the sea in the mighty holy name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, inangking ko, Panginoon, I'm releasing now the spirit of victory, the spirit of miracles, the spirit of deliverance, the spirit of healings, Oh, the spirit of financial freedom, the spirit of prosperity, the spirit of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your people are now freed, emancipated from all curses of the law. The Philippines is redeemed from the curse of the law. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Bless, bless our government. Bless, bless our beloved countrymen. Bless, bless the Philippines, Lord. And help the Philippines to be a blessing to many nations of the world. And your holy, holy name of God, be exalted and be glorified. Binabalik na namin sa iyo lahat ng papuri o Diyos, ang lahat ng pasasalamat. Ikaw lamang ang tunay na dapat purihin. Sa mga pangyari ang pangalan ni Jesus, ang lahat po'y magsabi ng Amen and Amen. Light TV would like to extend our heartfelt thank you to all our generous donors and sponsors. Your unselfish giving will continue to touch more lives for the glory of God. My favorite since teenage days. Pinagpupuyatan ko talaga. Totoo. Blessed morning sa Light TV God's channel of blessing. Malaki ang pasalamat ko sa lagi kong pagsubaybay ng inyong programa. Sobrang nakaka-bless po program nyo, pati mga topics. Thanks for the inspiring word of the Lord. I hope that you can feature more of the sweet salamat rate rate for our listeners. You too can become God's channel of blessing by partnering with us and sending your donations via these channels. Bank of the Philippine Islands Account name Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated Account number 0040310064001 Swift Code BOPI PHMM Manila, Philippines China Banking Corporation Account name Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated Account number 1025-00001426 Swift Code CHBK PHMM Manila, Philippines PayPal Code number 8YT3 PHF ZL5YYY Again, thank you for partnering with Light TV, God's channel of blessings.